everybody! Happy Facebook Friday! I'm coming to you from another location today. I'm actually at a detox place. And today I want to talk to you guys about why we need to do a spring cleanse. And after that I'll talk to you about the benefits of wheatgrassing. Like why wheatgrass is so amazing for us. So um, spring cleansing, like people, what I've noticed with my business is, you know, in the winter people tend to go a little dormant, they gain a little weight, they hibernate. It's kind of natural, especially when the weather cools down, if you live in a cool climate. So um, when you, when spring hits, I think our bodies just naturally are ready to kind of cleanse and heal themselves. And it's time to just get into that mode of cleaning the body out, feeling better, feeling more amazing. So I'm like everybody else. I'm one of those people that you know when this time of year runs or comes around, I'm always thinking, oh, I need to do a liver flush. I want to do a cleanse. But I get so busy with my business and my lifestyle and just everything I'm doing that I really need to take that time out as well to do my own spring detox. So that's what I did this week. I actually went with a client and and here in a special detox center, and I've been doing um, only like sprouts. <laughs> Literally sprouts with a little bit of like nut or seed sauce, not nut sauce, seed sauce on it. Um, tons of wheatgrass. We are taking, I'm gonna, where's my wheatgrass? I want to show you guys how much wheatgrass we're doing. I know I have it here somewhere. Oh yeah, we are doing, um, we're drinking wheatgrass twice a day. We're doing wheatgrass implants twice a day. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that when I get to wheatgrass at the end. But um, the other part of cleansing is really just to take a break from a lot of things. And why do we need to cleanse? Well, one thing is um, the amazing amount of things that we are exposed to on a daily basis. And I've talked about this before with like car exhaust, stress, pollution. A big thing I've been hearing so much more about lately, and I know we all know this, but plastic. So people are drinking out of plastic water bottles, they're going to Costco and buying cases of it. They're, you know, buying water in plastic, and even if you transfer it out, it's still been in plastic. And what I'm learning is all these xenoestrogens, and there's a lot of different types of uh, fake estrogens that get created by using plastic, including BPA-free stuff. So we're really not exempt when we're using plastic, so we need to give our liver time to really get that. Well, one thing is to stop using plastic if you can, and the other thing is to give your liver time to kind of detox that. So doing a deep cleanse, whether it's a liver flush, a colon cleanse, some kind of spring cleanse for a week or two weeks or three weeks of just getting rid of things like salt, not using any plastic, like using only glass. Um, and we should be doing that all the time, but especially for that week to three weeks. Uh, not doing sugar. So we're talking about eliminating things like white sugar, of course, but also things like just a lot of fruit because fruit has fructose and fructose puts on weight and when we put on weight we tend to store more toxins in our body so anything we can do like eliminating carbs for a week um, even if you're vegan you know to eliminate carbs like I do that all the time and I'm not eating animal products I'm just eliminating things like fruit starchy foods like pumpkin or butternut squash or you know um, sweet potatoes anything like that anything that has a lot of carbohydrates in it focusing more on the protein rich foods like coconut, um, the nut sprouted nuts and seeds, lots and lots of sprouts. Okay, I'm eating fenugreek sprouts this week and if you guys don't know how to sprout, I do have a video on YouTube on how to sprout, but um, basically what you want to do is, you know, you get those glass mason jars and you soak a little bit of nuts or seeds, uh, especially for sprouting, you want to do something like fenugreek or, um, you know, you can do even lentils, raw lentils. Um, you can do broccoli seeds, and I've talked about that before, and alfalfa and clover, and there's all kinds of different um, things you can sprout. So when you start sprouting these foods in your glass jars with a screen on the top and rinsing them twice a day, you're loading your body up with protein. Because, you know, and I keep talking about this lately, but everybody keeps asking me that knows I eat a plant-based diet, how do you get your protein? And you just kind of would think eventually people would stop asking that because, like, it's such a myth that we aren't getting protein on a vegan diet. And I mean, I talk about that all the time. People compliment me on my muscle tone. And I've been doing this diet, this lifestyle for 20 years. And I have great muscle tone. I'm not losing muscle. And that's the thing people worry about. They're like, oh, you're just going to get flabby and lose muscle even if you're thin. Well, that's not the case. But I have really focused my diet on cleansing regularly, which I do at least four times a year. I do some kind of detox, like I'm here at the detox center. Or I do my liver flush, which a lot of you guys know about. 
Um, that's on my website, purejoyplanet.com. You can learn all about liver flushing. You can get the supplements for that. Taking care of your organs, your liver, your colon, your, you know, your heart, your gallbladder, all those things, like just really tuning in to like, I've got this beautiful body that I've been gifted and I'm here living this amazing life. Like, what am I gonna do for my body at least four times a year? I mean, we talked about this, like people take care of their car, they're out there washing it, they're like, oh, don't put the wrong kind of gas in it. You know, your dogs, no, don't feed your dog chocolate. And like, oh, they can only eat the best food. And then when we think about our own bodies, a lot of times people aren't taking the time to really cleanse and love your body up. So it's not, you know, of course it's hard. Like for me, I did a three day juice fast, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday this week. Finally got to eat again today. And yes, that is difficult. Like you're not, it's not the most thrilling thing in the world to feel like you're detoxing. So you wanna take this week and really set it aside for yourself. The worst thing you can do is have to do a lot of work during the week when you're detoxing because you need to take this time to just really spend time on you. Like I, in this place that we're at, there's like no cell phones allowed, no computers allowed. Um, you know, you can do it in your room, but they really want you to be free of all this media. So I came on today because it's my last day and um, I just want to share with you guys all the exciting stuff I've been doing this week. But really every time I do a detox, like when I get pop through to day five, like your energy is up, you feel amazing, your eyes are clear, your skin is clear, you know, and so for five days, think about it, five days out of a season, out of three months, if you could just take that time and put it aside, put it in your calendar, I'm going to detox this week. And detox can look a lot of different ways for you, you know, there's a lot of different ways to detox, and I mentioned liver flush. The one I'm on is like no salt whatsoever, it's all, of course, plant-based foods, no nuts, sprouts, lots and lots of sprouts, like big sprout salads, um, three days of fasting out of the six days that this program runs, um, and then wheatgrass every day, twice a day, um, doing two ounces of wheatgrass twice a day. So that's a pretty good size you know, shot. I usually do three ounces because it's a little Dixie cup. And what that'll do, I'm gonna give you guys the benefits of wheatgrass, but what that'll do is that starts to clean out your liver. It actually has enzymes in it for cleansing the liver it starts to pull out mucus and toxins. Like people get really mucusy when they drink wheatgrass. It starts kind of pulling heavy metals out of you. Um, so really there's so many different ways to cleanse, but you want to start thinking about these ways. And I want to invite you guys to kind of like, if you're watching this and you're interested and you're like, okay, I want to implement some stuff. There's a saying that I heard recently and it says, information without implementation is useless, right? So you guys are listening to me and you're like, oh yeah, that's a good idea, I should wheatgrass, or that's a good idea, I should cleanse. But if you're not gonna implement it, and I'm gonna tell you guys all about wheatgrass, it's pretty much just a waste of your time and energy. And I do listen to a lot of podcasts and there's always new information coming in. So I pick and choose, I'm like, all right, of this information, I'm gonna get that book and I'm gonna start implementing these things. So I wanna invite you guys during what I'm saying today, just to decide on one thing this week that you can implement. And it could be something as easy as just upping your water intake. And I know I harp a lot on, on doing water, but you know, doing a quart, uh, three quarts of water a day. I have this new, this is my new favorite water bottle. I just got it. It's called Contigo. And this is great because it's metal. And I'll just show you inside a stainless steel. So you can throw this in the dishwasher. But what's great about it is um, I like it better than my other water bottle, which you can't see right now, but it's the one that you have to screw the lid off. Because I can have this in the car, it fits perfectly into the, the holder, and it has that button that you push so it opens the drinking spout, and it's even got a little like loop for when you're walking. So this is my new favorite one, 20 bucks, I got it at Target, and it's just so easy to drink your water out of. Price tag still on the bottom, but you want to make sure that you're getting. This is a quart. This is um, 32 ounces. So you want to get four of these in a day if you can, especially during detox season. Just wake up in the morning and start hydrating, hydrating, hydrating. What that's going to do for you when you're really hydrated and you don't do it with food, like first thing in the morning. I always say this: put it by your bed at night. Fill it up before you go to bed. Before you leave that bedroom, you should have finished this whole quart. Right? Get that down while you're getting ready, whatever you're doing in the bathroom. Just drink, 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 drink. Your body is so dehydrated from eight hours of sleep that it's been detoxing, your tongue's coated, and your teeth are filming. 
Get that water in there and start getting the flushing going. If you do four of these a day, anybody who complains about bloating or just, oh, my stomach's distended, this is gonna start flushing out a lot of those extra toxins that are hanging out in there. So you wanna do it before each meal. So before breakfast, before lunch, before dinner, and then maybe a little bit more. You don't do it too close to bedtime because then you're gonna be peeing all night. You know, you wanna get a good night uninterrupted sleep. So I would say stop drinking about an hour before bedtime. But water, herbal tea, anything like that, like the herbal tea can count as your four quarts of water. But if you could up it from two quarts, which is our normal amount, to during a detox to four quarts, you're gonna notice a huge difference. You're gonna be flushing a lot of stuff out of your body. The other thing I wanted to talk about um, with things that you can add in is to, uh, I talked about eliminating sugar or carbs. So maybe that's one thing that you can pick up this week. If you're already eliminated white sugar, like good for you. Most people, like I have, most people I teach and coach, we get them off the sugar like in our boot camp we're doing right now. Um, there's no sugar in the diet, but people are still using things like coconut sugar or dates or raisins or even fruits. Um, what about all the fruits that we eat and like, you know, not to give up fruit forever because fruit's healthy and fruit's good in balance, like maybe two pieces a day. But when people are gorging on fruit, what's happening is along with all their other foods, they're just giving themselves way too many carbohydrates. And the fructose is actually harder for the liver to um, process. And yes, I know nature gave us fruit, but over the years, humans have really hybridized that fruit to make it a lot sweeter. Like if you found fruit in nature, it would not be as sugary as like these apples today. So if you're gonna eat apples, eat Granny Smith. If you're gonna do fruit, do things like berries, like raspberries and blueberries. Strawberries tend to be a little sweeter, maybe blackberries. Um, do things like that. And then instead of blending them up, because it's so easy to go through a cup of blueberries, eat them one by one and really savor them and chew them well. And you'll get your sweet fix with just that little bit of fruit without having to feel like, oh, I didn't get my sweet today, I'm gonna eat chocolate at night, or I want that coconut bliss, or, you know, we've all been there. It's like, you deprive, 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 and then you wanna go for it. So during this week of cleansing, you could, maybe don't, you don't, I mean, I've eliminated all sweets here, like there's no fruit, there's no nothing, it's just green food. But you could, like, if you feel like it's gonna make you go crazy, you could have like a half an apple a day, a couple slices of a green apple, just to keep that little bit of fruit going, but, you don't feel like you get this crazy fruit craving, but you might wanna put that on something you wanna do this week. Like this week, I'm gonna just eliminate all carbohydrates. And I talked about that earlier, cooked pumpkin, cooked squash, um, cooked uh, any kind of um, butternut squash or sweet potato or things like that. Of course, any white food like potatoes, rice, that's pasta, that's all out. Um, you wanna just go with as much green food as possible, tons and tons of salads. Blended soups are great. Not too much avocado this week. You would want to do like just a quarter of an avocado, a quarter to a half every other day, very little. So this cleanse would be really about eliminating as much food as you can while just having three meals a day, no snacks, and then doing wheatgrass if you can get it. So another thing you could put on your list of things to implement this week if you wanna just pick one thing is to sweat. Okay, so I've been learning a lot more about this here, and I've always talked about how amazing the infrared sauna is. People that sweat on a regular basis, like let's say athletes that are just always sweating, they tend to get less disease. Why is that? Because our sweat glands, we need to be sweating at least 20 to 30 minutes, like a good sweat. So going in an infrared sauna, or just doing something that really makes you sweat, like going you know, on a hike in the, a little bit of heat, or you know, doing just some kind of crazy fitness that's just making you drip with sweat, like Bikram yoga. That's why I love Bikram yoga so much. You feel so energized from that because you've just detoxed like a pound of toxins through that sweat. I actually weighed my Bikram yoga clothes once. I weighed them before I went to Bikram and I weighed them after. I took the clothes off and just weighed them and it was a pound, they weighed a pound more, which is one of these of water that I sweated out during a Bikram class. And along with it, like your yoga clothes, when you do Bikram yoga classes or any of those hot yoga, your clothes start, <laughs> even though you're washing them, after about the, you've done it a few times, those same yoga clothes, even though they're clean, start to smell sour. I mean, some girls have said, I've just had to get rid of the yoga pants. So if you don't wash them, I mean, ah, those Bikram places smell really sour because of all the detox. But think about all that stuff coming out of your sweat. Like when we sweat, we sweat out salt, we sweat out smells, you know, things are coming out of us. So just sweat, sweat, sweat. So that could be one thing you can incorporate that this week, and that's really easy. I have an infrared sauna in my backyard, so I try and get in that at least once a day, turn it on early morning and sweat before I work out, 
or sometimes I'll do it at night. I don't like to do it as much at night, but like right before bed, it's a great way to do it. I mean, it's just your personal style, what you like. I like to be cool at night, not hot at night. So I tend to like to do it in the morning and then that kind of revs my system up for the day. And they also say if you do it in the morning, you've increased your metabolism by heating yourself up. So it kind of, you're burning more calories. It's great for weight loss. So that's just one thing you can do for weight loss without doing anything else is just sweating. Try and sweat out a pound of water a day. How cool is that? So these are some things that you can decide which one do you want to implement this week. And the fourth one, which I'm going to get into in a second, is add more wheatgrass into your life. And if you don't know how to add wheatgrass into your life, like where do I get it? Um, luckily here where we are, there's just tons and tons of wheatgrass available to us. But if you don't know or you can't, don't have access to it, I would say call your Whole Foods or call whatever your natural food store is and ask them to order it for you. You can pre-order it, go to the grocer, and they always have access to it, but it's just like, are people ordering it? So you can do that. If you can't get access to anything else but the frozen stuff, then you can do the frozen little cubes that you find in the freezer section. They're not going to be as good, but they're still going to be super amazing. And then powdered wheatgrass would be your third but last choice because you really lose most of the enzymes in the drying process, and it's just... You don't really know the process. Sometimes they're just powdering the whole grass. You're not getting the juice. You're just getting the grass powdered down, which isn't the same thing as just the juice because you need to remove that fiber to really get it to suck into your system. I've talked about this with people before. Like, What's the difference between juicing and doing fiber foods like blended? Well, when you remove the fiber, it goes immediately into your bloodstream. So you're going to want to do this on an empty stomach, right? Because if you do it... Um, while your stomach is full, then you're not absorbing it. And actually you can get very nauseous from wheatgrass, so you want to do it on a completely empty stomach. I just want to see what Mateo says. Um, you have amazing energy. Thank you. Did you have a question? The things we have learned from your class. Um, oh, he planted some wheatgrass, I think it says. I can't read the whole thing because it cut off. But anyway, hi Mateo, good to see you. Um, yeah, so we want to do that wheatgrass on an empty stomach. We want to do it at least once a day, like in the morning, after you get all your water and you get hydrated. Instead of coffee, switch over to wheatgrass, right? A shot of wheatgrass in the morning. This is my dream that um, you can get into, uh, instead of coffee, like there's these going to be bars everywhere. Like instead of Starbucks, it'll be like all these wheatgrass places all over the world. Or juices, you know, it doesn't have to be wheatgrass, but green juices. So you're, there's all these people sitting around drinking green juice, talking about their health and like, I healed my cancer. Instead of people that are in the coffee shops just needing their drug for the morning, right? Um, so wheatgrass, wheatgrass, wheatgrass. If we could get start a movement, right? Let's start a movement of like seeing how we, amazing we can all feel. And people are like, what they're going to say to you when you start doing this, like, what are you doing? Your eyes are so sparkly. Your skin looks amazing. Like it's the cheap, people are going and getting Botox. They're paying for all these crazy things, facelifts and whatever they're doing to their skin. Every time I do a cleanse, I feel like I just got a facelift. Like people are like, what did you do? It's like, you know, your eyes are sparkling. Your face is like tight. Everything changes, and I mean, I'm actually putting wheatgrass on my skin. People here are actually doing poultices of wheatgrass. They take the fiber from the juice, stick it in the wheatgrass juice, and stick it like on a breast lump or on a scar tissue or whatever they have. Like those enzymes are going to start breaking that stuff down. And you know, if you have any joint pain, you can stick it on your elbow, just wrap an ace bandage around it, and let it kind of soak into your skin. You can take a bath in wheatgrass. You can take like this much, which is about that's about a half a cup of wheatgrass right there. Um, you can take that and put that into your bathtub and just soak in that and your skin is going to feel a little green, not really, but silky smooth. You can do that right before bedtime and like that, all those minerals, don't rinse it off. All those minerals will just soak into your skin overnight. And I've known people that have put it on like a broken clavicle, like they didn't go to the doctor. Instead, they just kind of did this poultice on their clavicle and like healed, knitted the bone. So just there's so many benefits. So I want to talk to you a little bit about a few things that you can do, like what wheatgrass is good for. Um, it can be used to treat eczema and psoriasis, so any skin conditions. If you have acne or you have chronic, like just itchy, rashy skin, like parts of your skin, there's a couple ways you can do it. You can do the bath that I talked about, or you can just apply, like I'll take a, the wheatgrass and kind of just rub it under my skin, or like after I've drank it, I'll just take whatever's in the cup and rub it under my eyes. You can do little poultices that I talked about with the wheatgrass fiber and stick it around your skin. It'll kind of stick on there. You can lay down. 
Um, the other thing is an ice cube. You can make wheatgrass into just a tiny little thin, thin ice cube. You wouldn't want to do the whole ice cube, but then you can just rub that ice cube right onto your blemishes. And then if they're inflamed, they'll shrink from the ice, but they'll also shrink from the wheatgrass. So you could do that like in the morning if you had a little extra time, like for five minutes before you get ready, you know, wash your face and get ready to go. That's just going to shrink everything down. If you've got bags under your eyes from maybe just eating too much gluten or carbohydrates, or you were up too late or you were drinking, any of those things where your liver when your liver is overtaxed it shows up as those big bags under people's eyes that you see whenever I see that I'm always like they're really taxing the liver and most people are usually eating too many grains grains will make you have those big puffy bags under your eyes so a little wheatgrass under the eyes like do the little ice cubes under the eyes in the morning that's gonna help but then drink that wheatgrass to kind of clear out the liver so if you have had a night of drinking you want to make sure you're going to have wheatgrass there the next, very next morning. I mean, you could drink it right before you go to bed, re realistically, but at least the next morning, get that in before you start acidifying yourself. Because what do most people do? They get up in the morning and they drink coffee, and that's the most acidic thing we can put in our body. Even, like, I like coffee sometimes, the, the um, organic, you know, the non-moldy ones, the, the best quality coffee on the market, like cold-pressed. Yeah, that's all great, and I'm not against coffee, but I'm saying... You might not want to start your day with coffee. Like you want to start it with a lot of water, some lemon in that, and then a shot of wheatgrass to really just get your everything flushing out. And you're going to just feel so much more amazing. Um, the next thing with wheatgrass is that if you have a few pounds to lose, wheatgrass can really help you because it's really high in selenium, and it, that's crucial for um, healthy functioning of the thyroid gland. Our thyroid sits about right here. And when we have a malfunctioning thyroid, Especially women a lot of times tend to gain weight when their thyroid's off. Men too. But um, by just doing wheatgrass regularly can help really regulate your thyroid. And these are all studies that I've looked up. This was a 2013 study in, in clinical in endocrinology. It says that um, selenium in your diet can help improve irregular, improve irregular thyroid function. So a lot of that in wheatgrass. Um, you can reduce your food cravings. Have you ever had like a really strong sugar craving but then you drink green juice or you drink a shot of wheatgrass? Wheatgrass will stop your any food craving in its tracks because after you drink wheatgrass, you don't want to eat anything. And I'm not putting down wheatgrass. It does not taste like the most amazing thing ever, but it's not, it's also not, um, it's just, it's something you just get down. You know, you're not going to savor it. You want to shoot it down and then your appetite's gone. So sugar cravings, if you can have, even just get that frozen wheatgrass and keep some in your fridge that's defrosted, knowing you're going to drink it every day. When you get that that really bad sugar craving that hits, or you, I gotta have carbs, do a wheatgrass shot instead, and it's it's amazing. It's like a miracle cure. I tell people all the time, if you want sweets, I always, because I help people get off sugar, I say the first thing you should do is drink a, a green juice. So instead of drinking a green juice, um, you could drink a wheatgrass shot, and that's kind of sometimes easier if you've got the frozen stuff on hand. And I would recommend even freezing your green juice. It's not gonna be as nutritious, but I would rather have you have the green juice on hand like in little ice cubes, than to not have it. Like to be, oh, I don't feel like juicing. So if you have a lot of green juice and you've made extra, you can freeze that in ice cube trays and then defrost it as needed and like have a little shot of green juice if you've got a sugar craving. Um, the next thing is we know that uh, wheatgrass detoxifies your cells because it's really alkaline. So we, I talk a lot about alkaline versus acidity. Coffee is acidic, meat is acidic, eggs are acidic, dairy is very mucus forming and acidic. Bread's acidic, grains are acidic, corn, even organic non-GMO, is acidic. So everything acid that we eat, including stress, we eat with our brains, um, causes disease, right? So we're, we've got disease running rampant, cancer, everybody's getting cancer. You know, uh, diabetes, heart disease is the number one killer. Um, we've just got obesity running rampant. A lot of this is due to acidity. And then just people not treating each other well and kindly and nicely acid body. So what do we do? We want to get more alkaline with all our green foods. Wheatgrass juice is one of the most alkalizing foods on the planet. You get that wheatgrass juice in your body every day and you're going to be like just singing a new song. You're going to be feeling so good. And I'm telling you this because I've been doing wheatgrass for five days. So it's really fun. Um, so when we get our systems alkaline, it'll truly really change our blood, the acidity of our blood. Like you could look at it under a microscope before and after the wheatgrass and you're going to go from a low pH to a higher pH. And it's just amazing when your pH is high, the joy just flies out of you. You just feel that pure joy all the time. And all it is, you could be having a life that's just okay, but if you're alkaline, everything seems amazing. You know, you've met those people that are like, you're like, where do you get all that energy?
energy and usually there's someone that's pretty alkaline um, so um, improving your immunity it also improves your immune system as we know of course doing all this stuff would improve your immune system helps with circulation so it helps to increase the amount of oxygen in your blood blood and it stimulates circulation so if you have cold and hand feet hand cold hands and feet do some wheatgrass every day that's gonna really help helps with your digestion so instead of like when people have heartburn, you know, they reach for antacids or they're always trying something different, drinking apple cider vinegar, um, wheat grass in your daily regimen is going to actually help with that because it's creating more systemic enzymes in your body, which will help to naturally break down your food, right? And it just boosts all the, everything in the digestive system. It just increases it. And when your liver is functioning pro properly because you've detoxified it with drinking this wheat grass, um, you're like, I notice every time I do a liver flush, my bowel movements increase by like double because my liver is functioning and the bile can come out of the gallbladder and like everything's working the way it should. So if you're having problems with constipation or you're not going as much as you think you should, do a liver flush and or start doing wheatgrass and it's going to really improve your digestion. Um, it helps with arthritis and you, you know, just by drinking it because again, arthritis is acid related. When people are acidic, the acid builds up in the joints, right? So like a wrist that you use a lot gets arthritic faster because there's so much acidity there from using it. And if you're alkaline, guess what? Arthritis tends to reverse itself. I used to have a lot of arthritis in my wrist just from years of you know, weightlifting and doing uh, waitressing for a while and just doing a lot with my wrists and never, no more. And I'm getting older and things are actually getting better and improving. So you know, all this things I've been doing for the last 20 years, it shows me like I meet people here that are my age and they're like, you know, one gal is like limping and she, she's like, it's hard to get in and out of the car. And I haven't had any of that. And I think it's to do with the fact that my body is so alkaline and just I'm giving it all the right stuff. So fatigue, anybody out there fatigue, just regular fatigue. So this will help reduce that because your body really actually gets the the chlorophyll in there and it helps to boost the immune system and increases the oxygen supply, which I talked about. So when your oxygen, there's more oxygenation in your blood, along with deep breathing, I really recommend doing some deep breathing too if you're gonna cleanse, like every day set aside five to 10 minutes to just focus on almost hyperventilating with your breath, just deep, deep breathing and then hold your breath out. Like I would, so here's what I would recommend. Breathe for um, 30 rounds of breaths, like <sighs> till you start to feel a little lightheaded. Then on that 30th breath, you hold your breath out as long as you can. You can time it on your phone. And then when you can no longer stand it, suck the air in and hold it for 15 seconds and then um, let it out and then do it again. So do it like three rounds of this. By the third round, you will not need coffee. You're gonna be bouncing off the walls. I do this on a daily basis. Then sometimes I'll jump in a cold bathtub if I have access to cold water, which I don't always hear in, in Arizona. But um, what about a good quality wheatgrass powder? Yeah, I talked about that earlier, Debbie, in the talk. Um, wheatgrass powder is just not as nearly as good. It's about a fifth or less of the quality that a fresh wheatgrass juice would be, but it's better than nothing, for sure. Um, okay, so let's talk about getting rid of body odor. Does anybody just have like regular body odor? Normally, when you're detoxing, you're gonna get a lot of body odor, but once your system is clean, I notice for me, I just don't get body odor. Um, you know, every once in a while if I eat something with way too many onions or a lot of spice, like you start to kind of get body odor. But drinking wheatgrass helps actually clean out your liver again because everything's tied to the liver. When your liver's functioning properly, it doesn't have to send everything out through your armpits. So you can just, your, your body odor kind of just tends to eliminate. Your breath starts to smell sweeter, smells like wheatgrass. But, um, so there's a lot, you know, just the whole sweating thing can help actually get rid of body odor too. So with that. Uh, treat skin wounds. It's kind of the same as putting it on your acne. If you have a scar, I've seen people walking around here with wheatgrass on scars and on um, cuts that they have. You know, put it on your hands if your hands are cut at all, and it'll start to heal really quickly. Like if you just take a bath in it, you'll notice that your hands and all parts of your body that have any kind of blemishes or reactions will just kind of get healed up really quick. Helps with tooth decay. So you could swish your mouth. You could like there's a thing called oil pulling where you could put coconut oil or sesame oil in your mouth and you swish it for 15 minutes, then spit it out. You can do the same with wheatgrass. Just swirl it around your mouth. You swish, 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 and it's gonna really help pull toxins. Then you want to spit it out. You don't want to swallow it after you've swished it in your mouth because the body tends to let um, your mouth 
pulls toxins out of it through your skull, through your body. So anytime you're doing wheatgrass, you can just do a swish with it. If you just can't bring yourself to drink it, at least do a swish. And that's going to really help with tooth decay and just cleaning. Keep your teeth really white too. Okay. Because um, it's, And it's also very antimicrobial. And it has shown to have um, curing effects on candida, which means that it can help with oral thrush. So if you know anybody that has like white patches on their tongue or they get really sore tongue, it's probably oral candida. It's called thrush, but it's the same yeast fungus mold. So doing the wheatgrass can actually help cure candida and heal candida, which is part of a regimen. We're getting ready to release a three-month program for you guys who have candida or think you do. We're going to do a three-month program where we're going to work with you on getting rid of your candida, and I'm going to put you on some programs like this, but a little easier, but... Um, to work with you for the full three months to really help reverse that candida. But anyway, can wheatgrass is definitely part of that, getting that wheatgrass in your body, especially if you're doing wheatgrass implants, which I'll talk about at the end. Um, cleanses the liver. I've already talked about that. Treat sunburn. You can put it all over your sunburn if you get sunburn. It helps, helps kind of like stabilize the skin. Um, let's see. Clear sinus infections. Now, you can, like I've done it here, um, put wheatgrass in your eyes, clean your eyes out. Put wheatgrass like a neti pot. You can put it up your nose and like kind of just lean your head back and let it drip, drip down your, you know, it'll come down your throat. And so that's just going to clean your nose out. If you have any kind of sinus stuff, that kind of snorting wheatgrass would be great for you. Um, prevents, it says here it prevents cancer because we know of all the cancer is another form of acidity like toxins, mold, yeast, fungus. So when you're getting this wheatgrass in, you're kind of reversing all that stuff. And you might get some serious reactions from wheatgrass. One of them is nausea. A lot of people here are walking around like, I'm so queasy, I can't even drink it. A lot of people aren't drinking it because they can't even stand the smell of it. So it shows you how toxic you are depending on how able you are to drink the wheatgrass. If it's pretty easy for you, you're probably fairly on the clean side. But if even the smell of it just makes you sick, you might want to do it. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but hey, guess what? If you throw it up... You're throwing up all the mucus that's in your stomach. There's stuff getting pulled out of your mucosal lining. So who cares? Like, just drink it and let happen. whatever happens, happens. It might give you diarrhea, too. It's just going to want to flush right through you. All those are good things. All those are signs that your body wanted to get rid of that thing. Not the wheatgrass, but whatever was in there. And so sometimes it'll cause you these headaches, these nausea, these diarrhea, these some kind of craziness. But the more you do it, the more clean your body's going to get and the more easy it is for you. And I mean, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but I have been doing this for 20 years and I can just, I mean, I'm down this size while I'm here. Normally we just drink like half that amount, but it's easier and easier and it actually tastes good to me. It tastes really sweet. And I actually really like, I've been, people are like, you're doing a lot of wheatgrass here. And I'm like, I want to take advantage. There's just like trays and trays and droves of wheatgrass here. They have a whole huge greenhouse just dedicated to their sprouts and wheatgrass. So it helps with colds, of course, because if you have a cold, you're acidic. So drink that when you have a cold. Instead of chicken soup, go for the wheatgrass juice. Um, hangover. I talked about hangover cure because, again, everything seems to be tied back to that liver, right? Hangover is just a sign that the liver is sluggish. So get that wheatgrass in, like I said, the next morning. First thing in the morning, your water, 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 lemon, 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 and wheatgrass, right? And the more you can drink of it, the better. Helps improve your mood because, again, alkaline equals happy. And helps you de-stress. So if you're super stressed out, a little wheatgrass can help with this because there's a lot of vitamins and minerals in it. A lot of times when people are stressed, did you know that B vitamins get sucked the quickest when you're stressed? Like, stress is like a Pac-Man for B vitamins. It just gobbles it up. So you want it. If you're in a stressful job or your stressful life or you've just got kids or any of that kind of stuff, get that... Um, get that alkalinity going and um, just make sure that you're getting all the minerals in your body from the wheatgrass. Wheatgrass is one of the highest minerals and it's got tons of B vitamins in it. It's got most of the vitamins in it. So you want to get that in your body and then it's going to help you with your B. Like I do the B vitamin injections. I go and get natural B vitamin injections in Tucson. So you can find a place that does that. And if you are vegan, I really recommend you do this at least once a month. It only costs, I think, about 20 bucks to get a shot. Um, depending on where you go. In Tucson, everything's cheaper. But um, get you can even sign up for a program. Usually if you do four, you get one free. And get your B vitamins. And you're going to notice your mood is going to be so much better. Your skin's going to look better. And you're, if you're stressed at all, you know that it's kind of balancing that out. So, you know, really look into those B vitamins. And I do also one called Max Stress B that's on my website. And it's a liquid. It's the highest quality B, vitamin, vitamin B I've ever found. 
So it's a whole complex, not just the 12. I put that in my water bottle for the day and I'll kind of sip on it throughout the day because I don't want to just drink it in the morning and pee it all out, right? So keep that in mind when you're doing things like expensive B vitamins or MSM or something. Instead of taking it all in one go, put it in your water and kind of sip it throughout the day. And then by the end of the day, make sure you follow, you finish that one like mason jar of the vitamin water. It doesn't have to be your regular drinking water, but every time you walk by it, like if you're at work, keep it on your desk and just, oh, let me have another sip of that and kind of just take it in throughout the day. Um, improves appearance of your nails. Do my nails look good? <laughs> um, helps with menstrual pains. So it says um, irregular and painful menses can be attributed to malnourishment or vitamin and mineral deficiency. So particularly magnesium, as we know, and iron, and I mean and niacin. So um, according to this study, actually way back in 1981, that wheatgrass is, is abundant in vitamins and helps fill any holes in your diet. So it can actually really help ease those menstrual cramps because I mean, we know magnesium, calcium, all those things are usually part of the cramping thing. Um, someone was asking me today about like, what do you do when you have menstrual cramps? And I was saying, well, you could do maca, but also like just doing more of this wheatgrass or even putting the wheatgrass on your belly could really help just suck those minerals in and get that kind of the estrogen balanced a little bit. So it slows the aging process as we've been talking about. Um, amino acids, there's a lot of amino acids in there, which we know are the building blocks to protein. What do cows, cows weigh, I say this all the time, cows weigh 2,000 pounds and they eat grass. So we're drinking this grass. Where do you get your protein? In this wheatgrass. That's where all the protein is. We're just cutting out the middleman, which is the middle moo, the middle cow. Get rid of the cow and drink the wheatgrass because that's got all the amino acids in it that they can use to create like apes and gorillas these huge bodies, then they're not fat, they're all muscle, right? So, you know, for you people out there that want to get a little more muscle tone, just drink your wheatgrass, get all these amino acids in your body, and those are going to turn into muscle, especially if you're doing a little push-ups. Do your push-ups and your sit-ups every day, do your lunges. You don't have to go to a gym. Just do some just natural body weight resistance, and you're going to notice a huge difference in your muscle tone. Um, just try and get work your way up to like 100 push-ups a day, even if it's in sets of 10, 10 times a day, and then work up to 25 times a day. Every time you think about it, like, oh, let me do a few push-ups. Even against a wall, if you're somewhere in public, you don't want to get down on the ground. But um, I actually, on road trips, been known to like do handstands in the, in the gas station before I wash my hands so that I can get it off. But, you know, whatever you need to do to kind of get your muscle tone working on a regular basis. Helps with radiation, so if you know anybody that's been exposed to a lot of radiation, and this could happen from chemotherapy, you know, they do the radiation when they're giving people cancer treatments. You want to get that wheatgrass in, so if you know someone that's in chemotherapy, the best thing you can do when they're cycling, like maybe not during the chemo, but right after it, is to get them on as much wheatgrass as possible. Give them, I just thought of this, give them a foot bath, like if they're like, I cannot handle that. Put a small foot bath, put a bunch of wheatgrass in it, warm water, and let that suck up into their feet because the feet as we know absorb a lot of stuff. Um, helps stabilize your blood sugar levels so if you're kind of like oh, I can't go fasting I'm gonna feel like you know all dizzy and lightheaded and I can't function well the wheatgrass it can actually kind of help keep that stable. I felt really stable this whole week here really good even with the fasting because the wheatgrass is kind of keeping me really even keel. Feeds your brain tons of energy like bing 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 I feel like my brain's just going like lots of crazy dreams like everybody here is talking about how many dreams they're having like everything's kind of alive when you do this wheatgrass so um, it helps get rid of dandruff which is interesting it says dandruff thrives on dry unhealthy scalp it says um, so countless people affirm that that rinsing their hair with wheatgrass can help to balance the pH of your scalp and ultimately repair it that makes sense right if we're drinking it you put it on your scalp and maybe leave it in there as a conditioner and then the next morning you might put it on at night before you go to bed and then the next morning wash your hair and then you're going to have you know it's going to really help with that skin with that scalp um helps with fertility if you're trying to have a baby get a shot of wheatgrass and your hubby's breakfast too that's what it says <laughs> um and also the last thing is you develop a more discernible palate so one thing that i've noticed on this cleanse and i mean every time i cleanse this happens and anybody that i know that i've put like Matthias, who was, I was talking about earlier, has done my liver flush. I see Kathy joined, and you've done liver flushes with me. Uh, Carla Feliz, you've done liver flushes with me. I see a lot of my friends on here. Um, when you do a cleanse, which is usually like a, a liver flush includes like a five-day fast, your palate 
everything tastes good. Like I can just eat a sprout here. I'm like, it's delicious. Where normally like if I'm eating regular Himalayan salt all the time and doing all these crazy recipes that I love to do, um, my palate just gets desensitized. So I need like more, more, more. So when you take all the salt out and you just do these juices and the wheatgrass, your palate now becomes like more discerning about things because you're literally cleaning your tongue off too. You're detoxing your tongue. And so try that. If you kind of just are sick of food or everything tastes bland to you, try doing a week long cleanse or fast and you're going to notice how amazing even like a piece of basil can be. I remember one cleanse I was on years ago was like I was new in raw foods and I was on this cleanse and I remember I was being at my friend's house and I was so hungry because I was on this fast or cleanse and she had basil and I ate a basil leaf and it was like, wow, that is the most delicious food I ever had. Just a basil leaf. Um, so you'll start to really notice how foods completely start to transform in your mouth when you cleanse. So that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention is, this is kind of a more sensitive topic, but talking about, we call them E's and I's here. So it's basically enemas and implants. So you know if you've gone to do a colonic, and anybody that's done to, gone to do a colonic, what a colonic is is where you go and a practitioner puts a tube in your butt and flushes like five gallons of water in it, and it kind of flushes itself back out, so back and forth. And by the end of it, your colon's completely empty and clean. And then they implant, they don't normally, but some places will implant some wheatgrass in. What the wheatgrass will do when it's in there is it kind of starts sucking up any heavy metals. I was just kind of thinking about that with myself. Like I've been exposed to so many heavy metals as a kid, and even all my life, like this will actually pull it out. You can kind of start to taste it in your teeth, even though it went up the other end. You can, Kind of taste it in your mouth it's like doing its work in there you might get a metallic taste on your tongue um, and then you can either hold it in or after 20 minutes you kind of go on the toilet and release it but sometimes it doesn't want to come back out it just wants to stay in there and like have a party and clean stuff out it's going to kind of help replenish those good bacteria in your gut so it's like happy 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 in there so you'd probably want to do about this much i've been doing this much twice a day as an implant so you just Basically, if you're going to do an enema, you just do a couple buckets, um, and you can look up, I have some stuff on my website about how to do enemas on purejoyplanet.com. Just go to the store and look up, type in the word enema. So I talk about all how to do that, but you want to kind of flush your colon out with a couple enema bags or buckets, and then put some wheatgrass in, and like, what I do is kind of do, where well, you put your legs up over your head, and like, the bicycle, and so then you get the gravity working with you, and it kind of goes up the other way, and then it just kind of, it might want to come back out, but it might just want to reabsorb into your system. So any of these things are going to really help you guys start to get cleansed. So I just want to invite you, because it is spring, it's Easter on Sunday for those of you who celebrate Easter, and we just want to kind of like look at our lives and go, what can I do for you, body? Like, I love you. Thank you, brain, for working so well. Thank you, mind, for creating like all these things that I get to do and people I've met and the relationships I have and just everything you've created in your life is due to this body, right? To that body. So you want to thank it. So what can I do to thank you? One week, one week, what can I do to thank you this season or this month? Do a cleanse, do some kind of cleanse. Please do a cleanse. Three day juice fast, how about that? Or one day fast, how about intermittent fasting? Two days a week, I do Sundays and Wednesdays. Just get your juice out and just drink that all day or just drink water if that's easier for you. Or if you're really crazy, like me, you can do a dry fast, which is 24 hours of no water and no no food, no nothing, just dry. But what happens is it kind of cuts off all your bodily functions so you don't have to pee, you don't have to drink, you don't have to do anything but just chill out for 24 hours and it dries up. So when you don't have water in your body, guess what? Yeast, mold, and fungus are like, hey, I need that water to survive. And since the cells are smarter, luckily, than the yeast, mold, and fungus, the cells win because they're competing for that water and the mycotoxins, the yeast, the mold, the fungus, things that cause cancer are going to dry up and then you just rehydrate the next day but you've given it, it's just like putting a diaper out in the sun, right? It bleaches it, cleans it, it's like love, love, love. So you want to kind of do that with your body. Dry it out every once in a while. There's nothing wrong with it. I've done a thing on my YouTube channel. There's a, if you look me up, talk to, and I've blogged about it too, about dry fasting. And I'll probably do another thing soon about that because I'm super into it. But whatever you guys choose to do, I hope you pick some kind of fast. I do have a, liver, a guided liver cleanse on my website, which if you go to purejoyplanet.com, click on courses. And there's a, for $49, it's nine days of me doing talks like this and giving you, me and Caitlin give you like a whole course on body care, um, you know, how to make your own face 
mask, how to make your own you know, toners, how to make your own uh, toothpaste. We do a really fun toothpaste. So all that's on the guided liver cleanse. And then if you don't have the stuff you need to actually do the cleanse, you can actually order that from the website as well on the store. But even if you just want to watch through the videos and see is this something you want to do, you can kind of zip through them, just kind of fast forward them or just see what I'm talking about. And then go, yeah, I really want to do this. And then you can go ahead and get the supplements you need and then just set aside a week to do a nice liver cleanse. So um, thanks for being here, you guys. And it's really been fun doing this. And I'm going to go back because I'm still here. Um, go back to this cleansing, amazing place and maybe get some sprouts for dinner soon. <laughs> so I love you guys and I'll see you next Friday.